Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're gonna be going over my notes from the Christmas devotional this year, 2021. Uh, I think I found some pretty interesting things I wanna share. So if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video. If you end up liking it, hit the notification bell uh, and leave your comments. So uh, let's just get right into it here. I'll pull up my notes. All right, so <clears throat> there are a few things that I noticed just kind of right off the bat. And, you know, it's probably just because it, it was Christmas, you know, it's, it, it's a Christmas theme, but I noticed a lot of red, <laughs> a lot of red. And uh, again, yeah, it's probably because of Christmas, but it draws my mind a little bit to the second coming, how Christ can be uh, dressed all in red. All, all the men, all the speakers, uh, and then of course the, the tabernacle choir, uh, they all had red ties, but each speaker had a red tie, probably just because of Christmas, but just a little observation. Um, <clears throat> so the first person that spoke was um, Michelle B. Craig, who is the first counselor of the Young Women General Presidency. Um, I really enjoyed her. I enjoyed all the talks. They were really good. Um, she was talking about how... Uh, that our time and talents are some of the best gifts that we can give. And um, you know that, that there's a lot of like less conspicuous gifts because a lot of times people will look at more obvious things like, oh, you're a good dancer or you're a good, um, you know, whatever, <laughs> just like obvious things. But sometimes we forget about um, the, the more subtle gifts, things like uh, listening, being a, a disciple, uh, the gift of pondering, the gift of offering prayer. And uh, sometimes we hold back, so we need to make sure not to do that um, and share our gifts, you know. And uh, just on a personal note, I, I think that's what I'm doing here on YouTube. It's what I'm trying to do. Um, I just got the sudden prompting a few months ago to start a YouTube channel. And I, I think a lot of the good things have come out of it. And, uh, you know, I don't know how big it's going to get, but um, <clears throat> I'm just going to keep going until. I guess I feel it's the right time to stop. Who knows when that'll be. But, uh, you know, I want to join her in just asking everybody, just use your gifts, whatever they are, especially especially the ones that have to do with gathering scattered Israel. Um, that's the main focus right now. That's the most important thing going on. Um, so don't hold back. Whatever it is you have to offer to the rest of humanity and all of God's children, make sure that you... you um, share those gifts with others. Um, <clears throat> so she says, don't let God's gifts to you go unused. Make sure to share them. Um, she highlighted the gift of avoiding contention. Uh, as a lot of you know, that's like one of the big themes right now is avoiding contention and becoming the Zion people. So um, you hear this uh, pretty frequently nowadays, I feel like. Um, it's been a big theme over the last, like, at least the last year. Uh, she talked about using your gifts to help build up Zion, right? And um, that, that's always been a concept, but, like, I think we're getting more to the point where we're talking about actually <laughs> really building Zion. Uh, the Zion that's going to be here to greet Christ when he comes. So um, I thought that was interesting that she brought that up. Now, one thing I really liked that she brought up was the, the hymn or the, the carol, Joy to the World. Um, <clears throat> and she said, uh, you know, will we receive him and uh, receiving our king and his gifts? Like she quoted that, receiving our king and his gifts. Now, you may not know, but um, I've known this for a little while, but Joy to the World uh, actually is not, uh, it wasn't originally made to be a, a Christmas hymn. It, it's a, it's a hymn or it's a carol, a song that's about the second coming. And um, I decided to pull up a little article here that talks about this. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't really find like something that you would really consider like a authoritative source to like prove this point. But yeah, I, I think it's pretty well known. You're, this probably isn't the first time that you're hearing it, but let me just read, read you this. This is from uh, churchleaders.com. 
So uh, <clears throat> this is what it says about Joy to the World. And I, I think that there's meaning uh, as to why she chose to talk about that hymn in her talk. You know, I, I feel like a lot of them, uh, when I say them, the general authorities are dropping all sorts of hints and breadcrumbs <clears throat> to help get us ready for the reality of the second coming. So check this out about Joy to the World. There's one Christmas carol that is unlike all others, says Claire Fan. Uh, Fan is, a, is the academic dean at the University of the Holy Land, a Christian university in Jerusalem. Uh, that song, Joy to the World, is not about the first coming of Jesus. That hymn is about the second coming of Jesus. All right, the background to Joy to the World. Um, English hymn writer Isaac Watts was the author of, author of Joy to the World, a poem based on Psalm 98 uh, that was included in a poetry collection he wrote in 1719. The poem was never intended to be a Christmas song. <laughs> uh, it was over a century later in 1836 that a man named Lowell Mason, Mason uh, set the hymn to music. Mason was a Boston music teacher and uh, the leading Presbyterian hymn composer in the United States. He, pub he published Joy to the World during the Christmas season, and that is how the song became associated with the holiday celebrating the birth of Jesus. Um, at one point, it was reportedly the most published Christmas carol in the United States. Um, it's about when he comes again, finally, says Van, and rules in power, injustice, and mercy. Here are the lyrics to this famous song. And, I, and I'm going to read them because, um, you know, this is basically my, <laughs> ever since I found that out, it, it basically became my favorite Christmas carol. Um, Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Uh, let every heart, Zion, of course, that, I, that's probably not what was on his mind, but let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Uh, let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sins and sorrows grow. <sighs> that is going to be great. Um, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow. <clears throat> far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace and make the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders and wonders of his love. So made me really happy that she referenced that. And I think that that was maybe her intention is to to call up some of that imagery like she she quoted part of it she said receive our king right um so obviously when he was born the first time we uh for those that knew better knew that he was the king that he was the messiah but uh a lot of times when we're talking about him being the king it's in the in the context of the second coming so all right then uh on to elder W. Mark Bassett of the 70, uh, he was wearing a red tie. He used the term uh, Christ's birth to millennia ago. And, you know, I know like that kind of phrasing has been used many times, but just interesting that he would use it this time because we're looking forward to this uh, final millennium uh, when Christ is king and rules the world. Uh, he talked about how peace is becoming more difficult to find. Uh, which, you know, he's basically calling attention to the fact that we're in tribulation right now. We're in a time of tribulation and um, all sorts of commotion. He, <clears throat> he uh, referenced DNC section 45, verse 6. Um, I pulled that up because I wanted to see, uh, you know, what I could find and if there's any particular reason that he, any, any other reason why he would have referenced this. Um, it says, in that day, let me look at the footnote for that day. Oh, what do you know? The day of the Lord, the second coming. So in the day of the Lord shall be heard of wars and rumors of wars and the whole earth shall be in commotion. Uh, that's the part that he 
was talking about, and men's hearts shall fail them. We talked about that too. And uh, they shall say that Christ delayeth his coming until the end of the earth. Interesting that he would uh, reference this particular verse, isn't it? Interesting, interesting, interesting. And he was basically saying that this has been fulfilled. Um, the fact that the earth is in commotion and that right now men's hearts are failing them, um, which is important to note because I think a lot of people, they look at men's heart, hearts failing them as like a future event. Like things are going to be so crazy that like people are going to be having heart attacks at... <laughs> at how spectacular things get uh but according to him and, and i think that his talk is sanctioned by the brethren uh it seems that this scripture is probably already fulfilled uh we probably don't really need to look to the future for this to be fulfilled anymore there's probably gonna be more hearts failing but as far as it having been fulfilled i think that that's the case that's just like a subtle thing that you can take out of this talk um Okay, and then he talked about Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Um, pulled that up. For unto, unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, <clears throat> and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Uh, now, this is, of course, a very famous scripture, but it, it's that part right there where it says the government shall be upon his shoulder. Um, again, there's obviously like a kind of like an ecclesiastical government, but also a literal government that's going to be his uh, at his coming. Uh, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And that's the bit right there, the Prince of Peace uh, that, you know, he's talking about in his uh, talk is about peace. Um, it says his kingdom, uh, future kingdom the second coming kingdom uh his kingdom will be established including peace and love so right now now he's just talking about the second coming um and then he says uh he brings up another isaiah uh scripture uh isaiah 52 uh verse 7 how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings and publisheth peace that bringeth good tidings of good and publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth. Thy God reigneth. Let me look at the chapter heading, because it, yeah, there you go. There it is, uh, chapter 52. In the last days, Zion will return and Israel will be redeemed. The Messiah will deal prudently and be exalted. Yes. Uh, and well, let me read this, the scripture after that. Uh, Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice, and the voice together, and with the voice together shall they sing, for they sh shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. Um, and when you click on that footnote for shall bring again, it says uh, millennium. And then it says uh, Hebrew returns to Zion or restores to Zion. So when the Lord returns to Zion, instead of uh, bring again Zion, when the, when the Lord returns to Zion. So <clears throat> very close proximity to some very uh, right on the nose scriptures, but the whole chapter is simply being about the last days and the second coming. Um, and then he talked about... Um, the promise that you know blessed are the peacemakers um now that's interesting because that of course comes from the beatitudes and um you know there's a lot of interesting things about the beatitudes but when you when you listen to or like when you look at it a lot of those kind of uh imply the second coming right <clears throat> blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven um, and we know that when it's talking about kingdom, uh, Christ came when he came the first time that like started the kingdom, um, which didn't remain on the earth. There was the great apostasy. Now it's been established again. Uh, blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek for they shall in inherit the earth. Um, and when you click on that footnote, it says 
uh, Earth, Destiny of. So in other words, <laughs> the millennium, essentially. Um, blessed are the pure in heart, so Zion, uh, for they shall see God. Um, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Um, so I feel like, you know, the Beatitudes, they are a general concept, but they also kind of point toward, uh, again, the destiny of the earth, the millennium, the last days, the, the kingdom. Um, so interesting. Uh, let's see. For this day, he hath spiritually begotten you. Therefore, you are born unto him. Uh, that's just like, like. A quotation from him basically talking about well the next bullet point here we are the covenant children of christ we are the peacemakers um and then he says yes we see that the whole earth is in commit in commotion and men's hearts fail fail them um and then he he used the term later on the great return of the prince of peace just another second coming uh reference his talk to me, a lot of it was about the the second coming, spe specifically how Christ is going to be, bring peace, how the millennium is going to be a period of peace. Um, so yeah, it's just really good stuff. And then uh, the next speaker was Dale, Elder Dale G. Renlin, uh, another red tie. Um, he talked about his father. Uh, one thing that I like that he said about his father is that he was not somebody that was ever fanciful or uh, and never embellished things, uh, you know, because that, that goes to that concept of, you know, uh, being a humble person, not being prideful, not exaggerating, not, not doing things for, for attention from other people. Now, one thing I liked in his talk is he talked about the story of Simeon, who was a man um, at the time that Christ was born. And he wanted to, he prayed that <clears throat> he would not die until he saw the Messiah. Um, and it happened. He, his, his prayer came true. He, he did not see death until Christ came. Now, that's the thing right there. This is a thing that I, I just, I'm assuming, uh, but I just feel like maybe Elder Redland chose that specific story as like a foreshadowing for us us that are alive right now frankly i don't think that we're going to see death until christ comes i really don't i really really don't and of course like there's people dying all the time but like i i'm just gonna say it to be safe probably generation x and the millennial millennials are definitely going to be alive when Christ comes. I, I can't make any guarantees for baby boomers or, or beyond, but I, I would assume there's going to be plenty of baby boomer, boomers and, and more that will be here. I mean, just look at the general authorities. I think that right now, the, the apostles that we have, there's probably going to be a good number of them, I think, I just, I think that will be alive when Christ comes. So <clears throat> anyway, if, if you take the whole congregation everyone that was watching this devotional i think that that would probably apply to the majority of who, who was watching this devotional that's that's my opinion and uh he brought simeon up several times he didn't just like tell the story once but he uh called back to that later in his talk a couple a couple more times um and then he said the church is the Lord's kingdom reestablished. Okay, so he said, I think he said, the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is the Lord's kingdom reestablished in preparation for the Lord's second coming. <laughs> do, you, do you get the sense that <clears throat> all of them, for the last like while now, at least the last year, all of them, when they talk, in one way or another, reference the second coming. And sometimes uh, <clears throat> not so subtle. Uh, and then he talked about his father's dream that he had two months before he passed away. Uh, his father had a dream uh, where in the dream he died and he saw Christ and Christ told him that his sins were forgiven him. 
and how that was kind of like a tender mercy and just how we can know we can know of the reality of christ um and, and he said this christmas ask for the gift of knowing the reality of jesus christ um because you know what that might help you when he actually really comes like be prepared knowing that this because it's really easily it's, it's really easy especially if you're maybe if you don't have the strongest testimony to just kind of like see the scriptures and even see christ himself as just kind of like an abstract concept and just stories so it would probably behoove all of us to follow his guidance uh ask for the gift of really knowing jesus christ because pretty soon he is actually going to be here and uh i think it's going to be incredible but it's also going to be uh just like mind-blowing i think that we're going to be in a in a constant state probably of shock and awe when, when that happens and uh oh that's probably not the best phrase to reference shock and awe but um <clears throat> I, I think it's going to be a really stunning thing to a lot of us when, when this actually happens when this becomes reality so let's get prepared uh he and then he says he is real and he lives and you can know that too um and then uh, i don't know i i didn't get a whole lot in terms of you know second coming themes in um, president iring's talk it was a very good talk because he basically summarize the whole life of christ from the time that he was born to um you know his crucifixion and, and that he can help us find peace and adversity um again there's that that just kind of general theme right now of um uh, finding peace uh finding safety um during this like very tumultuous time that we're living in um but anyway he gave like a really good talk but in terms of like what we cover here on the channel uh there wasn't too much to note from that but it, it was it was very good it was very 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 christ-centered and a great way to end the devotional so uh that's basically that's what i got out of it <clears throat> a lot a lot a lot of second coming stuff in there i i think we're just getting closer and closer and cl like really close in uh you know if we if we could just like see how everything is going to play out if we if we can know the program i think that we would be stunned at just how close we are and how how soon things are going to happen so uh i hope you enjoyed this i hope you got a lot out of it uh yourself uh whatever you did make sure to put it in the comments below if you got anything else out of it and then uh if you haven't already please make sure to subscribe like this video if you like it share it with others and I'll talk to you guys later.